Hi, I'm Paul, and I have a backpack. And if you stick around, I might just show you what's inside of it. Hey, I just came back from a trip where I skateboarded the Alcan Highway, or the Alaska Highway, from Fairbanks to Dawson Creek, and then I carried on into Alberta. Now the trip originally was supposed to be a Great Divide trip, moving north, finishing off somewhere around Whitehorse. I decided to carry on into Alaska, then at the very last minute, changed my mind and went southbound because I was concerned about potentially being late and having the logistical issue of rebooking my flight. I didn't actually complete my objective of completing the divide. However, I got most of the way <laughs> and I did complete the Alcan, which was nice. So I didn't really know how much filming I was planning on doing on this trip. I hadn't completely thought through all of the conditions. So this is one trip where I erred on the side of caution. Normally I go into these things very well prepared. I often don't need any more or any less. This trip was one of my worst for that logistical side of the planning. I did carry a little bit extra, mainly in the video photography side of things. But I did carry a little bit extra maintenance gear and wet weather stuff. Maybe I didn't quite need all of it. Basically anything aside from my sleep system, which is very well honed, um, it's maybe not my best work. But nonetheless, I'm gonna show you exactly what I carried. So as none of you probably know, I used to work in the outdoor gear industry. Kind of blending that access to gear and that knowledge with skateboarding was sort of how I actually started my long distance skateboard travels. I took the hiking knowledge that I had learned from being in Alberta, uh, near the Rockies, and from my time in the Army, which is kind of like the same thing. <laughs> Skateboarding knowledge, having no money to afford plane tickets, mixed that all up, so I just started skateboarding. So let's first start with what I didn't use. So I actually brought this thing along. This is a DJI RSC2. It's a lightweight motorized gimbal. This is my robotic cameraman. I did not use it after three days and that was enough for me to send it back. I wasn't sure how much filming I was prepared to do. When the road was rough and I realized it was going to be for about 1,350 miles, I decided I wasn't gonna waste the time setting this up. So this, no, did not make the cut. Other things that I didn't use would be the rope for bear hanging. All of the trees in the far north are pretty weak and spindly, so you can't really do a good bear hang. I kept it just in case I got stuck out in, uh, in crazy rain and I needed to kind of give myself some sort of cover to be able to put my gear inside of my bivy bag. It'd be nice to be able to use that and my rain skirt, which is like a mini tarp if I needed to be, to be able to shield myself from a bit of rain. Another thing I didn't use that you will see in a little bit was my repair kit for my skateboard. I didn't use any extra nuts. I brought one of each type of nut, one mounting bolt, some extra lubricant, and an extra two bearings. I talk a big talk, but when it came down to it, I brought those things just in case. My goal was not to use them at all, and mission accomplished. Aside from that, there's a few other pieces that I had for other types of repairs for my water bottle or my sleeping mat. And I actually had to pick up a little bit of extra stuff to repair my footwear and my rain pants because I needed quite a bit more than what I had in my patch kit in order to fix the massive tear in my crotch. So this is the backpack as it is. This is a Palante Joey. It's my favorite backpack going right now for this type of travel for a few different reasons. Uh, one, it sits pretty high on the torso and I can hike it up even more. So that way I can do my power slides and I can disassociate my torso from my hips and I can do my pendulums without dragging the bottom, ideally. 
Um, another thing that I really like about it is all the quick access it has. So water bottles, water bottles, extra gear, and underneath here I can put food. And I actually have my bear spray, which I brought on this trip, underneath here too on quick release, ready to go, super fast. It also gives me the ability to store my camera here and pull that out, ready to go. It does have a lens cap, but when I pull it out of the backpack, the lens cap stays behind. So it's really fast deployment. Now this is not actually the camera I used. I'm actually shooting with my R5, my Canon R5 over there. This is my Canon R5 that I had on the uh, backpack. It's super heavy and that sucks. Yeah, man, this, this camera sucks to carry, but it gives me the ability to shoot 8K, 4K. It lets me output like really high quality stuff in case I decide to use some of this footage in a film or something. I have my Polar Pro Mist variable ND filter while I'm filming into the sun. This bungee here is an extra little thing that I've added. Really allows it to be secure. I can jump around, I've wiped out, crashed, and this thing is held up. Other quick access, here I have my, my lavalier microphone and my recorder sits in this pocket and I'm actually using it right now for this video. And this is a tiny little Zoom F2. It is incredibly lightweight and it records a 32-bit float so I can adjust the volume later because I don't have the attention span or the time to be fiddling around with levels continually on my trip. And so it basically records the entire volume range of your microphone and you can just scale it later on. I have a little Ziploc bag to keep it dry in the wet. So speaking of animal safety, I have this counter assault bear deterrent. This is the large 10.2 ounce bottle. Luckily, didn't have to use it. Bears aren't really uh, a concern for skateboards on chip steel because they hear us coming. Not only that, but I had it attached on quick release to this basu alarm. So, I scared the birds. When I pulled this out in a hurry, it would set the alarm off. If I wanted to take it out and be sneaky, what I would do is disconnect it quietly and then I could get this ready. For ungulates, I didn't want to spook them, i get this ready slowly. For bears, I was just ready to pull the thing out and the alarm would go off. While I'm fiddling with this thing, trying to get it ready, I, uh, if the bear is charging me and I didn't want to die, hopefully the alarm would be enough to sort of stop it in its tracks and make it think twice. Or at least buy me time to get that going. Not only that, but I would carry my daily snacks, you can see some remnants of that, underneath here around that as well. The only time I might not is when I was doing a downhill. You can hoist the backpack up a little bit more to kind of give you a little bit more clearance. I have here some MEC turtle lights. And those are basically my flashers for nighttime. And a couple carabiners to attach other things or to dry my gear out. Um, in this pocket, I have my Katahdin Beef Free Water Purifier. This allows you to drink right out of it right away. Uh, I was usually drinking drink mixes in order to keep my caloric intake up or just straight up like Powerade Gatorade for that extra electrolyte. These are slide gloves, these I wore. I wore them all the time and you should too. If you don't, you are taking unnecessary risk. And this is coming from a guy who doesn't wear his helmet all the time. If you don't wear your slide gloves, you are taking unnecessary risks. These are super lightweight fingerless gloves. I've got, this puck is almost paper thin and it works. And this is a um, seismic puck. I actually have another seismic puck with a spacer for when I'm going downhill and I want to have a bit of a riser for just one hand, I get to choose. I'd also keep water in here. The other pocket here, uh, this here is a little thing I rigged up to hold on to my little action camera, which I will show you soon. Uh, this actually bolts onto the back of my board 
on one of the mounting holes of my trucks. And I can position it and you can get those low point of views of me pushing from behind the board. Didn't really use it enough to justify bringing it, I think, but that's on me. I should have used it more, but I did get a couple shots with it. This is another thing that kind of made it, kind of didn't. And this is a 35 millimeter one, F1.8 lens, very lightweight with a mist filter. Uh, I would use this for nighttime shooting or if I wanted that artistic bokeh look. But I ended up using it so little that I uh, ended up mailing it back for the last week of my travel. Um, you can see here I've got my helmet on the outside of the pack. And I just hold it on there with a strap and then I normally buckle it to my pole loop for the backpack here. For this trip, I put a little thingy here for my action camera. This is a old Patrick Switzer Pro Model 888 helmet with a bunch of different stickers on it. I've got a Garmin InReach Mini and a carabiner to keep it attached so that way it's got good view of the sun. Speaking of which, I'm gonna adjust this because it is getting dark. This allowed me to communicate with everyone back home when I had absolutely no cell phone coverage, which was almost all the time. And instead of having to take my backpack off and reach around and fiddle with it, I could actually control it from my watch. Or when I had my phone on, I could use my phone. Inside the rest of the stretchy compartment, I've got my little headlamp here, 36 grams. Not very good for skateboarding at night. Often get myself pretty close to getting in trouble using this, but you know, weight is weight. In here, I have neutral density filters for my action camera and for my drone. This is my light load towel. The thing's super lightweight. It like costs like a dollar or two. It's the most absorbent backpacking towel I've ever found. I could use it to dry out my tent from the inside if I'm breathing in there too much or after I would take a bath. Sometimes this would be what I used, even in hostels. Um, spare pair of underwear. This is my dinosaurs breathing fire and shooting flaming basketballs into basketball hoops underwear. This is on the outside because normally I wash it by hand and it's drying off and then it rains on it and then I have to dry it off again. Uh, this is something I picked up during the, uh, the whole thing. And this is actually just a cream, antifungal cream, because I started getting something on my beard and I had a wedding to get to. So probably the most controversial piece of gear I own are these, and these are waterproof socks. They're Rocky Sockies. And uh, they let me use breathable footwear, but I can actually prevent my feet from getting soaked. And then when I'm done, I don't have to wear waterproof footwear and have gross feet all the time. I can actually let my feet air out. Uh, instead of just letting my feet get wet and then air out, which is what most of the through hikers do these days, the lightweight ones anyway, like I can really beat my feet up, so I don't want to do that. I, I'm willing to carry these for that. So this is a luxury item. This is my super lightweight Norvan SL. It's an Arc'teryx jacket. It's like feather light. It's literally just Gore-Tex with like a fabric-like coating on the inside. There's no face fabric, so it's actually fairly delicate. And if I crashed, I would destroy it. Unfortunately, these are discontinued because Arc'teryx doesn't see them as being very repairable because Teflon is so difficult to work with. Unfortunately, you can't really get these unless you find them used. It's the most breathable waterproof jacket I've ever owned because there's no urethane blocking the water and it actually keeps me pretty dry. And this is my trowel for digging cat holes for bathroom things. And I use this end as a spoon to eat my oatmeal that I didn't cook. In this bag, I have spare propellers and two Nemo tent pegs. And these have multiple uses, but for the most part, I just use them to keep my bivy bag from sliding around. But the reason I brought them was for rigging up a small tarp so I could crawl into my bivy bag if it was raining. Something that I ended up only needing to do once. This is my arborist throw rope. This is for hangs and for my uh, tarp. Again, didn't use it. Didn't feel like throwing it out. Thought maybe I would still use it, but that was a miscalculation. Super glue. Didn't bring it, had to buy it. 
but this actually was so important in making my shoes last. And Voltaren gel. I actually had this full and I had some prescription strength Voltaren gel for the start of the trip. And I actually did not need as much as I have in recent years since I've had my surgery. So it looks like things are getting a little bit better. Nonetheless, topical anti-inflammatories are way healthier for you than ingesting anti-inflammatories. If you're taking Advil three times a day for 20 days, so I use the topical stuff. I find it works way better uh, and it's targeted and I don't have to have it throughout my whole body. And you can use the super extra strength stuff like I do and it lasts a pretty long time. This is a small waterproof bag that I made. I hoped I didn't need this, but I did because I had my pack liner tear and the coating in the backpack wore out over time too. So my backpack situation wasn't as watertight as I would have liked. And this kept my uh, sleeping bag dry when I didn't have it inside of my bivy bag or when my bivy bag was a little bit wet on the inside. Uh, this is my Diddy bag, we call them. It's basically a bag full of stuff. I made this myself as well. It weighs like five or six grams. I've got my mini toothpaste, small toothbrush. Uh, this is a little mini bidet and a couple pieces of toilet paper. Some band-aids, they're hydrocolloids, so they actually let me heal and keep moving, which is really nice. Uh, this is soap leaves. I used almost a full thing of soap leaves, washing my clothes, washing my hair, washing my face, my body. I use these for everything that I would use soap for. Here's the other end of my, this is my toothbrush. This is it. Just half of a Z-Pax mini toothbrush. These are pills and they, I brought a few jelly beans, but that's some more anti-inflammatories and some salt pills. I had a couple dental flossers, these little things, just a, I don't care, you gotta keep your teeth clean, guys. You gotta keep your teeth clean. On the front, again, I've got my lavalier microphone. This is where I would keep my, the, my like biggest water bottle or like I would consolidate my water to keep some weight up front uh, to help balance the pack. But this is where I would have a big thing of water or drink mix. Down here, I would store my recorder as we've gone over. I've went over this stuff. In this pocket, this is where I would keep my step up rings for my other lens so I could use filters. I had an extra filter there. This is a lens cloth in a bag to keep it dry and clean. And these are my gloves for rain. I have two of them, but they're just nitrile gloves. The cyclists would laugh at me when they see me use this, but it's actually, it makes a huge difference. My hands get wet, but the warm water stays next to skin and the cold water. I have a couple of these little bungees and they just cinch to themselves. They attach on the loops on the backpack or wherever. And you can just cinch it to stuff to hold on to it, whatever. So I have two or three of these for attaching all kinds of stuff to the bag. And that's pretty much it for the exterior of the pack. Now that's not everything that was going on. I obviously had pants. These here are my Arteryx, Arteryx pants and these are what I wore. I did have problems with the pockets uh, delaminating on my mat pocket, so I couldn't use that after a while. Um, you can cinch them up. They've got elastics for that. They're pretty robust. I fell lightly and they didn't, they didn't put a hole in them, but they are definitely uh, showing signs of wear from where my gloves, my slide pucks rubbed up against them every day for the entire trip, but still pretty good. Still definitely usable. Very, very, very happy with these. If you're gonna buy a soft shell pan for this sort of thing, the Arteryx is great, probably the best. These are pretty lightweight for soft shell pants, but they're not lightweight by any means. I wanted pants to keep some space between me and the bug bites. On the outside, I would always wear this. This would keep me warm when it was cold. And this is a sun fabric. It's actually like your desert sun guard. It's an outdoor research Uber tube. It's the lightest weight buff you're gonna find. Super great. It's an old one, very happy with that. I would typically wear a pair of compression socks. These are actually low grade medical, like prescription strength athletic compression socks. Um, so I couldn't sleep with those on, apparently I'm not supposed to. 
I use Dirty Girl Gators, sized for my feet, but next time I will definitely get them one size down because they were a bit loose. These are a Saucony Switchback 2 shoe. They're considered a minimalist trail runner. They are lightweight and super grippy. They wanted to show off all this year 2005 trendy carbon fiber Kevlar looking weave when really they should have just had rubber all the way through it. And because of that, the rubber lifts really easily. And it would do so scrambling or in my case, being on chip seal. And so I had to actually start gluing this around the halfway point. I had to start gluing the tread back on with super glue. I like these shoes because they're breathable shoes. They're really quick to get on and off, which is really nice in the morning or at nighttime. So this midsole that they use, this cushioning, it's pretty minimal. So it gives you really good board feel. It feels like you're wearing vulcanized skate shoes, but it's also way cushy in a weird way. And it actually takes a lot of the bite out of the chip seal. So my feet hurt a lot less wearing these when paired with the Kegels, when paired with the Pantheon Trip and my titanium kingpin and axles, all that came together to make it really comfortable for the chip seal. I can't necessarily recommend these for chip seal, but I can recommend whatever this midsole is. Yeah, I'll put it right here in the space. There are a bunch of little beads and they expand into this squishy midsole material. This is my fanny pack. It's a Palante fanny pack. All the stuff that I needed to get to super quick that I didn't put on my backpack, I had in here. Like my phone, uh, a spare battery until it got wet and caught fire. This was a hard drive where I would store backups of my video onto, and I would offload my action camera footage. I've been talking about this action camera a lot, but I haven't shown you. This is an Insta360 Go 2. This is its remote control case slash mini tripod. And this is the actual camera itself. So I could take this off and stick it onto metal things. It's got a magnet. I could put it on those little body mounts, put it in my mouth, right? Throw it in a cup and I can control it remotely. This thing charges this. So that is a neat piece of gear. It's so small, you can put it in all sorts of weird places. This Ziploc bag was my wallet. I had my credit card, my driver's license, my bank card. I had a travel document and these cute little stickers that say, I drove the Alaska highway and I loved it. And then this mosquito one, this Kluwani, this Kluwani artwork of uh, a mosquito because it was a record mosquito year. Speaking of mosquitoes, I would also keep my bug net there because I actually used it a lot. It's a pretty lightweight bug net. You know, that's it. Still got mosquito guts all over it. This was my hat. Keep the sun off of me. I also, so instead of wearing a button up shirt or a short sleeve shirt, I wanted to prevent the sun burning and carrying extra sunscreen. I would have this smart wool shirt. Uh, it started off being a little bit darker in color. So the brown has washed out quite a bit. And I think that's pretty cool. Actually, I kind of like it more now. Uh, oh, shoot, back to this. Some of the most important stuff here. I have this mini Gossamer gear chapstick to prevent my lips from getting sunburnt. Hand sanitizer, which you need at the ready and sunscreen. I still needed to put some on my face even though the hat covered the sun because it would get a lot of reflection off of the road. And I definitely needed to get the sides behind my ears, my ears, my temples, um, maybe a little bit of my neck. But I only brought maybe a quarter of this bottle and it lasted the whole trip thanks to that sun buff. I also have my skate tool. This is a Skateology quick clip keychain skate tool. It's by far the lightest weight tool on the market. However, this is not strong enough for a lot of our kingpins. This one, the tolerances are pretty, pretty lax. So maybe if you buy one, it'll be a little bit tighter, but it would actually slide around instead of spinning my nut. So I was not able to tighten my trucks at all. Luckily, the aerogeometry geometry held up pretty well. And I had a 
way too many USB cables because I had all the ones I needed for my gimbal and it uses four cables to operate. Um, I had my charging one for my Garmin Fenix 7 watch, which is GPS. It does everything. It's actually ridiculous. And it's solar charging, so I could run. I, I actually used 1% over 12 hours one day when the sun was out because it was so bright and this thing just kept charging. I had to bring a charging cable for it, so I still needed to charge it. Because the sunlight is only a supplement. I had to bring a special charging cable for my camera, a cable for my hard drive, and then a bunch of different cables, USB mini, USB-C. So that way I could charge all of my gear and I could run four charging ports at a time. I had my uh, Swiss Army, or whatever, the smallest Swiss Army knife, file, screwdriver, knife, pair of scissors, toothpick, tweezers and they were pretty lightweight so I was okay carrying that. In my fanny pack I'd also carry my uh, battery charger. This is the Nightcore NB10,000. It's 150 grams and it's a 10,000 milliamp battery charger and it will actually charge Canon cameras which is pretty nice. I had another charger, the Anchor PD20,000 uh, milliamp but it shorted out after a week so I gave it up. The board's obviously a Pantheon loaded collaboration trip. So you've all seen this. I'm using Kegels, 80A in the front, 77A in the rear. I've got a few spots of vicious grip tape here for extra grip, especially when this gets muddy, which it did, and when the grip tape wears out, which it did. Era trucks, 46 degree base plates in the front, and 38 in the rear. These are 100 and 50 mil hangers plus about 158. These are titanium axles actually. These are uh, special ones that Kevin gave me and this, these kingpins my friend Aaron and I made and they're hollow titanium kingpins just to save like a few, few grams and actually make it more compliant. It works pretty good with the board and the wheels. It allows me to use these Kegels as tight as I can possibly get them. I can't get them any tighter to be honest. So it's actually the perfect size. On the outside, I'm running a black and a white Powell Peralta downhill bushing. And the inside, I'm using Riptide's Eliminator style bushings, or their big fat bushings. The cork was really nice. Carbon fiber was really nice. The wood held up. I did coat it with some uh, silicone. The bearings are Bones, Bones red bearings with the integral spacers and, and washers. And uh, I filled them with Phil Wood's waterproof grease. Did not have to lubricate my wheels at all, which was super cool, considering they got washed. Oh, they didn't get washed, I did. It was raining, and I might have gotten a bit wet. I had to pause there for a moment because my memory card got full and that reminded me I also had tucked away in my ditty bag my spare and used memory cards so all of my extra memory cards that I had for my Canon R5 were in my ditty bag. Okay inside my backpack! The way you want to pack these bags is you want all your heavy dense stuff next to your back first of all then the lighter stuff moves away it's medium weight like on the bottom and You'll see when I pull things out, lighter weight stuff comes from this end, the heavier stuff comes from next to my back. Another consideration is speed of access. But placing my rain jacket here, I need to take this backpack off to put the rain jacket on. So this pocket's for stuff where I need to take the backpack off. On the inside is stuff that I don't need for the day. So my camp gear, my like major food reserve, my rain stuff if it's not gonna rain. If it was gonna rain, I would place this on the outside. Anything that I needed to get to where taking my backpack off would have wasted time goes in the front, underneath, in the sides, or in my fanny pack. You have the consideration of backpack balance and comfort. The second consideration is keeping you moving, stopping you as little as possible from moving. Having to take the backpack off as little as possible. And when you do have to take the backpack off because you're changing your clothes, well, still having it somewhere quickly accessible, but not in a way that 
you have to root digging through your backpack, right? So this is a roll top pack. You roll it up, then you put your strap over. It's got a cinch, it's sort of a double whammy. Um, so here, this is my Senshi. I did not bring a puffy. This is all of the warm outer gear that I had. This is a uh, Polartec Alpha. It's basically like having fur and it really works well as a fleece. This whole thing is like 107 grams or 3.8 ounces. So it weighs almost nothing. It's like a 100 to 200 weight fleece. Uh, the only thing is, is it's not as substantial. Wind can blow through it and take that heat away really quickly, but it actually makes it really good as an active piece. So if you're gonna be sweaty, you can actually wear this and you won't get sweaty and gross half as bad because the wind can go through and get rid of it. And if you don't want the, a breeze to come and take away your warmth, you put your rain jacket over top of it and then it's super warm. I would also use this at nighttime, the few nights where it was cold, or if my shirt was too dirty and I didn't want to wear it, I would just wear this as my sleep shirt and take my shirt off. And so this would be my second shirt. Now, the only problem is, is that if it got super cold, which it could have north of the 60th parallel, uh, I did not have a puffy jacket. So at nighttime, if this was not enough, I put my rain jacket on. If that wasn't enough, the only thing I could do then is get inside my sleeping bag. I had two options get in my sleeping bag or skate. That was the plan for cold nights. These are my spare socks. These are also compression socks, but they're shorties because I didn't want to have the weight of carrying another pair of full, huge socks. So these are the Outdoor Research Helium 2 Pant. And I don't think I would bring these again. These were not robust enough for the rain that I had. And as you can see here, I tore the crotch open and this is Gorilla Tape holding it together. Luckily the Gorilla Tape worked, but my weight savings was ruined by applying it. So I may as well have just carried heavier gear. Uh, not only that, they were a little short for their size. So they said 32, and this is short for me as a 32. It, it, it's like a clam digger, like, it, like a very high crop 32. Um, it is nice having these zippers here. I don't have to take my shoes off. That was super important. I wanted it to get on and off pretty fast. But like I said, I'd probably replace it with something more robust, even if it was a little bit heavier because my weight savings was ruined by the extra modifications. And it leaked, like it went through on the heavy rainstorms. Typically, I don't use rain pants when I hike. I use a rain skirt. I don't like rain pants. They're clammy. They make me wet anyway. Um, a rain skirt or kilts for those that are sensitive about wearing skirts um, with a pair of gaiters is infinitely better. You Just so much better, dude. Just do that if you're hiking. But unfortunately, when you're skateboarding, you get wet from the ground up. Even, it can be just spittle coming from above. But if the road's wet, the wheels will throw it right up in your crotch. So you need to wear these if you don't want to go to bed with soaking wet pants, which is something that I didn't really feel I could afford if it was a really cold night. This was to keep me from freezing at nighttime. These are actually my uh, drone batteries. I use a DJI Mini 3, and I have a bank of three extra batteries, not including the ones in the drone. And this is a high capacity battery with my pilot information on it, which I could only use in Canada because I'm only licensed in Canada. But the rest are under 250 grams, so I can legally fly it in the States. And it's a pretty lightweight drone. And these, I can actually use this to charge my phone at nighttime as well. The next thing I have here is my bear bag. My bear bag is an Ursac. It's a smaller Ursac. It's a bulletproof or toothproof spectra fi uh, fabric. I mean, it prevents the bears from tearing the bag open and getting into it, really. They're still going to ruin your food. So to deter them from that, I actually carried this smell-proof bag. So I doubled up. This actually, more importantly, kept the rodents from nibbling into through this, because squirrels can eat through this, even though the bears can't. So this keeps the squirrels away and the bears. And inside of this, this is where I kept my passport. Uh, a couple drawings from my son that he gave me on a visit. So another luxury item I had were a third pair of socks. These were for 
uh, sleeping, right? I do tend to be pretty persnickety about getting my sleeping bag gross, so. Um, during the trip, I picked up extra grocery bags, mainly because my liner failed, which you will see in a moment. This is my rain skirt. This is not super useful skating because when you're wearing it, water can get up in here. So uh, I did use it when I tore my pants though. Um, what's cool about this is I can put it on and off without even stopping walking. But the main reason why I bought this was to be an extra layer of protection in case my stuff failed, which it did. So this actually kept my gear dry. I made this myself, by the way, it's 36 grams. It's got a zipper, so if I decide to walk with a really long stride, I can open it up. And I have tie outs, so I can actually use this as a very small tarp to keep the rain from getting inside my bivy bag. This grocery bag holds my sleeping mat. There's one other consideration I make when it comes to how I pack my pack, and it is if I have something that could get severely damaged in a crash, like my drone, I pack it on the inside. So this is actually a pain to get to, but this is my Thermarest Uber Light, Neo Air Uber Light. It's so lightweight, and it's an air mat, and it's really nice. And it's not great for the shoulder season, or for winter, but I have the warmer version or the medium version of this for that time of year. It's only a shorty, so my, my knees are off of the mat. Inside my backpack, I have made this little back panel that prevents anything pokey from getting my spine. And this is what I use on my feet <laughs> if I need it. Often I won't even bother using it. But that's my back panel pad. Um, another luxury item. Um, as I got, once I turned 38, I started needing to use pillows. Making them out of my gear just wasn't good enough. So this is a Sea to Summit, their ultra light pillow. Uh, it's got a two way valve, it's super comfy. It's, it's pretty darn lightweight. In the bottom I have these. I have them in a special case to prevent them from shorting out. These are an extra pair of batteries for my audio recorder. I'll show you the drone. I also have the drone in this little bag too, just to really prevent water from getting at it. This is the DJI Mini 3. I can talk more about it if you guys are interested. It's a 249 gram drone. Uh, I have a neutral density filter on the front so that I can get the cinematic motion blur. This is an excellent piece of gear. I'm. I thought drones were a gimmick, and then I got my Mini, and everyone loved those shots so much. So I ended up getting this once it came out, just before the trip. And I gotta say, this is legit. For such a small, lightweight drone, I told DJI like two, two years ago, if they ever made one of these, something like this, I would get it right away. And this has exceeded my expectations. This is a ground sheet made of window film. It's pretty lightweight. I thought if I might be sleeping on a lot of a lot of concrete pads and various campsites, I didn't really want to wear out the floor on my super light bivy. If I was doing a race, like a scram sort of event, I wouldn't bring this. And a lot of a lot of the time, when I have more maps, I'll actually use my maps as my ground sheet. But I wasn't able to find any maps that I was happy with, so I didn't bring any. This is my quilt. It is a Western Mountaineering Nanolite. It is good to three degrees Celsius and 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I had some nights that went down as low as minus six. Minus six, 21 degrees Fahrenheit with this 40 degree bag. It is an open back. You save the weight of the insulation that goes behind your back. It's a full sleeping bag around the feet right where my sleeping mat ends. And uh, this lets you regulate your temperature really well. You can cinch it around your back pretty good, you get tucked in. You don't use this insulation. It just gets squished and the down does nothing. It conducts cold from the ground just as well. So it all comes down to your sleeping mat on your back anyway. What's cool about this is it has this neat yoke, which actually does seal off drafts. Uh, so this is actually like probably the best design for a cold weather quilt. It is baffled, but it's all pretty small. 
It's not the warmest. I wouldn't recommend using this on the route that I took. You're probably better getting a more substantial quilt unless you really know your body. I can get away with this stuff. I'm also using a bivy bag, which boosts it probably in the realm of five degrees Celsius, which is probably more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It allowed me to get down to below freezing when I was wearing my pants and my cinchy. And if you're gonna use a tent, which I probably also recommend for most people, even though they're way heavier, you're going to need a more substantial quilt. This is my bivy bag. It's a mountain laurel design, event sole bivy. It uses a three ply waterproof breathable event fabric on top. This is just a really, really, really impressive watertight sill nylon. It does have a bug net. They make a lighter weight version that's only 270 grams. I got lucky, this one's only 300. It came out to be a lot lighter than they normally are because they made it a bit narrower by accident. So I, I, I was stoked on that. It does have a wire here to help. You can get rid of that, but I figured with the mosquitoes trying to bite me through the mesh on uh, warmer nights, I would keep the wire, and I'm glad I did. Even with the wire, I still needed to wear my baseball hat to keep it off of my face. Just keep that in mind. These things are not comfortable. You can't really get changed in them very easily. It's very hard to take your shirt off. They're not very nice. They're miserable. And unless you're willing to be miserable during sleep time, like I am, I would recommend maybe getting something else. Something that you might want to look into. Maybe a, a Dan Durston single person tent might be more up your alley. Uh, this is a two person. I'll be showing you guys this later. In the very bottom, right here, inside the backpack, I keep my drone mini pro controller whatever they call it. And this is just a shipping bag, a postage bag with the bubble wrap, just to give it some more protection and to be a little bit more weatherproofing for it. I had two of these Aki chargers. They provide 100 watts for my camera and 30 watts for all my other devices during, that use a PD protocol. And they have an extra USB-A just to charge things as fast as possible. Anything with quick charge, I didn't want it waiting, taking turns. I got two of these for this trip, which is a lot. My repair kit, it's got a little bit of Dyneema thread, some spinnaker tape, which is like Dyneema tape, a few patches, and some fabric patches. The patches, the, the patches for the sleeping mat and for my water bottle, if my water bottle sprung a leak. This is a, I would keep my keys in the bottom of my backpack. I had a single aluminum house key for my house. And this is a tile or like an Apple AirPod that I usually have with my keys. I kept that in my backpack just in case it went missing. This is my Nile Flume liner. I got it from Z-Pax. It was great for two years. Replace them every year, folks. Don't push it. The bottom of this is taped up now, but but the bottom of this tore open and all my stuff got soaked and I had problems with things shorting out and I got my hard drive stopped working. Nearly done here. These are my downhill, crazy downhill slide puck that I swapped out my super thin one for. I keep it in this just to keep the Velcro from scratching stuff because my gear's all pretty delicate and pretty susceptible to getting like damaged pretty quickly. And this is my skateboard spare kit that I never opened. This Skanunu bottle is full of waterproof grease. There are two bearings that are full of waterproof grease, one spare washer, and then these three spare nuts, era, kingpin, mounting. And you may notice I don't have mounting hardware here. I said that I had one spare piece of hardware for mounting that little swivel arm for my action camera for like my low down board shots. The way I mount it is with my spare mounting hardware. If I lost one and I was just running on three, whatever, I don't care. But if I lost too many bolts and I, I needed a spare, I could pull it off of that arm. So I didn't need to carry an extra one in that kit. Basically that's everything. It was a pretty heavy pack for me. The weight I'll just put here. 
because I forget. Overall, it was pretty decent. I would have liked to go a bit lighter for how hard I was pushing or chill out more and film more. Since I was running this sort of dual purpose, I never quite felt like anything was ideal. In some instances, I had my stuff pretty well dialed, like around my sleeping setup. But in others, I hadn't quite decided what I was going to do before I set off on the trip. Um, I really don't recommend you guys just copy my sleep setup without trying it out first. Some people really just can't stand to be in a bivy bag. And if you can't be in a bivy bag, you gotta use extra sleeping gear, you know. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anything super heavy. You don't want to carry very much. You want to be as minimal as possible. Without my camera gear and without the little bit of extra stuff I brought because of Alaska, I can have my backpack without food or water in the six to seven pound range. And this is good for me to minus five, five degrees Celsius below freezing or around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't know, don't go ahead and just try it. Links to my lighter packs and to many of the products that I can find purchase links for online are in the description below. If you would like to know more about any of the gear that I have here or that I've used in other trips or you want me to get into more depth over types of equipment and gear strategies that I use, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you're gonna do any trips, let me know so I can root you guys on and share some social media attention if that's something that you're into. Aside from that, don't subscribe. Don't do it. I'm good with what I got. Don't do it. I don't want to be one of these channels with all these subscriptions and then I have to go and make content all the time. And uh, have a really super good day.